So the goal for this is to go over all the basic stuff that we need to be successful. A lot of times people look at success and you know, when I speak about something, I speak about my personal experience, right? I didn't wake up successful. I worked a ton of different jobs, got fired from most all of them, probably all of them if I really, really sat down and think about it. Um, had multiple businesses, tried different things. It was funny, so I was uh, riding with Edgar on the way over here, and we went past an apartment complex. And I, I remembered, I was like, Edgar, I, I used to live in that apartment. And then he's like, oh, cool. I was like, actually, I used to live in that apartment and had no furniture. <laughs> and me and Bianca and Jen were with a network marketing company, and we're in the living room with no furniture. And when I got that apartment, there was a couple different models. So I wanted a two bedroom because I was splitting rent with somebody because I wasn't gonna pay for a whole apartment by myself. I wasn't in a place to do it. Plus I'm cheap. Um, and we had a couple different models. Like, oh, we definitely need the big, the big living room model. Like the one with the biggest living room. And he's like, we don't have any furniture. I was like, yeah, but we'll get it. Like we're gonna need it, right? And um, long story short, I, the whole time I was in that apartment, I've never had furniture in the living room. So the, the living room was always a big empty space. But Jen and Bianca and myself were sitting down on the floor in my living room, in my big living room department, and we were just talking about like, you know, what we're gonna accomplish and what we're gonna do, and, and we're gonna have these big meetings, and we're gonna have all these people there, and, and we're gonna build businesses and big teams, and, and that was our goal, right? We just didn't have the right platform, right? We had the mindset, we had the ambition, we had the goal, and we weren't making a dollar doing what we were doing, right? We weren't making any money, you know, and, and we, we didn't know, we didn't have the roadmap. That, that's what it was, you know? We didn't have a roadmap, we didn't have a lead system, we didn't know to talk to people, like, we didn't know. We, we weren't even taking the opportunity serious because we didn't have a strong enough roadmap to teach us how to take the opportunity serious, right? And, you know, a few different businesses, opportunities, stuff like that. I remember I was talking to Heather the other day, she said, oh, I thought this was just gonna be another one of your things, that's why I ignored you for a year, right? But then it ended up being something for real, and, you know, it's funny because, you know, once we got here and there's a lead system and one of the biggest questions I had, you know, Doug Blake, he's the one who hired me. I asked him like 14 different times. Oh, do you have leads? Yeah. Okay. Do you have enough leads? How many leads? Can you get leads every day? What if I bring a big sales team? You know, do you ever run out of leads? Do you ever not have leads? Do you? And I just kept asking that same question about leads, right? Because I knew from my past experiences, if I didn't have people to talk to, I, I, I might as well not be selling anything. I could be selling the best product in the world if I don't have people to talk to, because I'm not good at harassing friends and family, right? I'm not real good at, well, unless you're Heather, I'll harass you, right? I, I, have, I have a small circle who I'll harass, right? There's a lot of people like, I, it's out of my comfort zone, you know? N knowing what I know now and knowing that's what it takes to be successful, it's a lot easier for me to do, right? But, but not seeing the success and not knowing the, the outcome of what's gonna happen talking to people. So again, we, we, we came over here, I came over here, like leads, just, I mean, right off the bat, I, got I started with 100 leads when I, when I started here, right? And, <laughs> and to me, I looked at those 100 leads, I'm like, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing, I need a lot of people to talk to, and I need to talk to them as fast as I possibly can, and I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes doing it, I'm gonna be super nervous doing it, but I need to fail fast because I'm going all in on this. This is, this is it. You know, you guys got leads. You guys got a good product. I don't have to know a real lot about insurance. This is going to be my opportunity. This is going to be what I'm going to do. I got leads after two or three days. I was like, all right, I think I went through a hundred leads. I called Doug up and I wasn't sure, right? I had no, no basis. Does it take a week for a hundred leads? Does it take a day for a hundred leads? Does it take a year for a hundred leads? hundred leads seemed like a lot to me at the time. And I called up Doug and I said, hey, Doug, I, I think I need another hundred leads. I don't know. He's like, all right, well, let's, let's get you them, right? So I think within the first week, I, I, I worked 200 leads my first week in the field, right? Just door knocking at 70501. That's, that's where I was, right? Well, that's familiar with Lafayette. So that's the north side of Lafayette, right? That's, that's the, the, the lower income area of Lafayette. And, and that's it. That, you know, knocking on doors, stuttering. People looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm red in the face. I'm probably red right now, right? You know, I was even more red then. And, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. But again, like I knew where I was going from day one. I knew I was going to learn how to sell insurance. And then I was going to teach other people how to do the same thing. Right. What I didn't know at that time was I wasn't only going to teach people how to do the same thing. I was going to start showing other people how to build businesses as well. 
right? And, and that's what became, you know, a game changer for me, right? Learning how to do that, right? And going through the different stages. So again, that's a little bit about myself. Um, I'm just a regular person, just like you guys. I remember being on the other side of this, right? Watching other people talk, like, man, that guy's awesome, dude. That guy made it. That guy's lucky. And it must have been this. It must have been that. Not me. I can't do that, right? So I've been, I've been on both sides. And, and I'm telling you, it's, it's not that hard to get over to the side, right? It just takes commitment going to work, being coachable, like it doesn't take, like it takes little small things over a long enough period of time, right? And my whole thing, it was like, oh, I just have to find the magic thing to get over there, right? It's not the magic thing. The magic thing is the work, right? The consistency, the grit. Mindset. Mindset to me is, is where it all starts, right? And I'm trying to do this all in order so you guys, at one thing will build off the other thing, right? And when it comes to mindset, you have to believe, right? You have to believe that you could succeed. You have to believe that you could do things, right? You, you can't go, you know, they say a cannonball mentality, right? Like anyone goes to the ocean, the pool, and you go and you just keep dipping your foot, right? The ocean, you just keep going in a little bit. Oh, it's kind of cold. And you step back out and you come back and you, and you walk a little further and it's kind of cold. And you get to that little spot, like right here at the crotch, right? Where it's like the most torturous place to be and you just don't go all in and you don't go all out, you know, that's where a lot of us hang out, right? We hang out at like that hardest place to be, you know? But if you come running straight in and you jump in, like for one second it bothers you and then you're like, okay, I'm good, yeah. right? And, and that's what you have to do with this business and that's really how you wanna start living your entire life, right? I've changed so much through this process, through the growth and self-development and the experience and it's something I want to start trying to give to other people and, and, and for you to believe. So the mindset's super important. And I remember there was a time in this business about six months in and I wasn't rich and I didn't understand why, right? I'm, and I was judging myself based off Doug Blake's success and some other people's success in this company. And I was wondering why I wasn't there. And I was like, man, I don't see how they got there. I, I don't think it's possible. Maybe it was timing. Maybe, it's, it, maybe, maybe my timing's off. And I was looking at all these other things and other reasons. Maybe it's because I'm working in Florida, right? I'm looking at all these other th reasons that I wasn't being successful. And I almost walked away from the business. I, I almost quit. Hurricane Michael came, it hit the panhandle. I know how to make a lot of money when a hurricane hits, right? I lived in Louisiana, a great place for that as well. And I, I was like, dude, I, people are calling me up. Hey, you got work for me? Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready, Dave. I'm ready. Like I had crews calling me up. They're ready to go to the panhandle. And we go out there and make thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars with a lot of, a very little effort on my part, right? Very, very simple thing for me to do. And I sat there and I was like, man, that's what I was trying to get away from. Not because I didn't like it, because it wasn't gonna give me the ultimate life that I wanted of freedom. And, and I realized that and I, and I had to get real myself. I was like, listen, well, first off, I'm only six months in. And if I quit today, I can't say I really started, right? There's nothing in the world that you can say you do for six months, right? We go to college for four years to get a degree. If you go to college for six months and you quit, did you actually try to get that degree, right? If I wanna learn another language, I wanna learn Spanish and I start working on it and I quit after six months that I actually tried to learn another language, you know, playing a guitar, right? Six months isn't a long enough time to say you actually tried something. And luckily for myself, right? Because I didn't know my future. I didn't think my future was gonna look like it, it does now. Lucky for myself, I realized that, that I didn't even try. And I was looking at everything around me that I couldn't control as why I wasn't being successful. And I realized my mindset was messed up. I was thinking like the same person that showed up to this business, the same person that got fired from every job he got fired, worked in the past, the same person that wasn't successful, didn't have the success that he wanted, the same person that hit a plateau and couldn't figure out how to get past it. I had that same mindset. And for you to get more, do more and receive more, you as the individual needs to change. And it starts with that mindset. And what I did is every morning, as soon as I woke up, I blasted YouTube, some motivational video. I streamed it to my TV and it played through my, my apartment at the time. I had a little apartment in Naples, again, with barely any furniture, right? Uh, I had a futon in the, in the living room this time, but no TV. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's how I started my day. Every single day, 
seven days a week, the minute I woke up, I was feeding myself something positive. I had to feel like I was ready to run through a wall every day. And guess what? I came home about to collapse a lot of times, but I had to start my next day like new. Yesterday had nothing to do with the next day that I, the day I woke up, right? And I had to continue to work on my mindset. You know, and I challenge everyone to do the same thing. You know, something I do now is I, first when I wake up, I read. I read, I read a chapter in a book when I first wake up. You know, I drink some coffee, I read before I check my emails, before I do other things. Whatever it is that's making you grow, like making you change, right? Wherever you're at right now, it's because that's what you know. You know how to be there. If you want to be further and you want to advance, you, you got to work on your mindset. Another big thing I want to talk about is activity. We're going to go over a lot of things today, but the truth of the matter is if you don't have the mindset and you're not getting the activity, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. You could be the best person in the world. You could be the best fighter ever, but if you don't actually fight people, it doesn't matter. No one knows that. You're not going to get paid, right? You know, so, so you, you have to be willing to get the activity, right? What is activity? Activity is talking to people, doing presentations, failing, dealing with objections, getting told no, getting yelled at, getting hung up on, getting the police called on you, <laughs> whatever, right? That's all activity. That's part of the process. And the people that get the most activity are the ones that are the most successful. Edgar just flew in here from California. Edgar's been with another company for two years, very successful at that company. Edgar got to spend a week in the car with Jen. And what, what did you have to say about that? She's like, if I'm 10X, she's like 1,000X. If he's 10X, she's 1,000X, right? She's getting way more activity than he was getting. He's seen it. He's like, okay, I see why she sells so much. She's talking to more people. And she's dealing with more objections, you know, and, and it's really that simple, right? The ones that get the most activity are the, are the ones that win. Yes, it's uncomfortable, right? But when those daily paychecks start rolling, things start getting a lot more comfortable. You know, I remember having my first $5,000 week. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm starting to understand that. My first $20,000 month. Okay, okay. I see where this work's going now, right? But it's like you have to go through it to start receiving it to understand so the activity is really important. Well, how do we get the activity? Leads, right? So, so the leads are what's gonna give us the activity. Listen, it's all about talking to people. Whether you're cold knocking all day long, right? You're talking to people. Whether you pull the phone book up and you call this phone book all day long, whether you're getting live TV transfers all day long, Whatever it is that you're doing, it gives you the opportunity to, to get the activity that you need to be successful or the activity that you need to learn, right? In the beginning, when I first started, yes, I wanted to make money, but the goal wasn't to make money. The goal was to learn this business as fast as possible, to make a lot of mistakes, to talk to a lot of people, to deal with a lot of objections, to learn what I needed to know to get someone else through to do the same thing. Right? My goal was to build a business from day one, but I had to know how to help someone else out. Right? You know, Jennifer, I don't know, she's got some magic voodoo um, insurance sales power, right? So she submitted over a thousand applications her first year. To her, it was so natural and so easy that when she started managing and coaching people and they're having issues, she couldn't understand. She's like, I don't know why you're having issues. Just go, just go sell insurance to them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, like, why didn't you just sell 10 policies today? Why aren't you doing that? It, it was hard for her to understand why someone else was having the issues, right? So when I was having issues or bad days and flat tires and... August in Florida, heat and all these things. In my head, I was uncomfortable, but I was like, all right, cool. Now I know how to teach someone how to get a flat tire in August in Florida in 105 degree weather and still sell a policy because I made sure I did, right? You know, now I know how to deal with these different things and I can walk someone through it. So when someone says, Dave, you don't understand, these neighbors are yelling at me. Oh yeah, did they call the police yet? No. Okay, you're good then. <laughs> 
because they call the police on me, right? Hey, David, the, the apartment's locked. I can't get into the apartment. Okay, stand out there. Someone will come. Someone's going to come and let you in, right? You know, I, I had to go through these different things. And, and every time I had a bad day, that's what I tell myself. Now I know how to help someone do the same, right? So the leads are going to give you the chance to, one, develop your own skills. But again, if you're looking to build an agency, you need to go through these things so you can help other people, right? You can't be teaching other people, oh, well, this is what I heard, or Bianca told me, right? It sounds really good when you say, listen, this is what I've dealt with. I understand you're uncomfortable. I understand things aren't making sense because they didn't make sense to me. I understand you want to quit. I wanted to quit too, but look what would happen if I quit, right? If I quit at six months, out of that same story of everyone else that quit at six months. You know, I, I stayed a little bit longer and my story is completely different because of it. And so Jen's gonna talk about setting up your day. So, so Jen's a field agent. She's gonna come up here and she's gonna talk about how she sets her day up to make sure she has a productive day as a field agent. Come on, Jen. Okay, so first off, when I start my day, uh, obviously you get your leads. Making sure that you have your leads plugged into your Road Warrior the night before. Road Warrior is an app that I use. I pay like uh, probably $10 a month because I can claim it in my taxes. So get some kind of um, app or something that will allow you to preset all your um, leads. That way you have everything in order. So what I do is I set all that stuff up wherever I am at the location I start from, I will optimize my Road Warrior and then I will get it in order and go from house to house to house to house. Okay, after I'm done with that, what I do is I make sure that I plan my day and get up early enough so we can get to the first house for 9 a.m. And I always take a picture at my first house, 9 a.m. First house, post that in the price group. What it does, it actually helps you to hold yourself accountable so that way you can see, you know, other people are doing the same thing and it also encourages other people too. Well, if they're doing it, I can do it. Okay, so that's a good thing to do. You should always be posting pictures of your first house or your first call. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, for me, then I will work all day long, you know, so I don't really, I have this thing, you know, if I'm working, I won't eat until I sell something. So if you don't sell, you don't eat. So <laughs> I carry snacks in my car. So make sure I have snacks, make sure I have bottled water. Uh, I try to minimize my stops as much as possible. So always fill up before we go. <laughs> so, You're me, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I pack all my um, lunches. I make sure I have everything prepared. Um, my car will tell you the story. <laughs> so I work all day long. The whole day that I'm working, I minimize distractions. You know, of course, things are kind of changing a little bit for me right now. But throughout the whole process, you know, if I needed to stop for a second and just kind of like collect my mind, get myself together, call David, you know, park under a tree, take a break, eat my little snack, whatever. But I keep on going the whole day. And then I will work till nine, uh, 30 minutes after dark. So I work until dark 30. And that's typically 30 minutes after dark. But for me, it's about 9, 10 o'clock at night. And then I'll call it a night, you know, unless I can't see their address no more, then I'll go home. So that's pretty much what the whole day looks like and what, you know, is going to set you up for success and allow you to get the most out of your day. Making sure you're checking all your neighbors. So I do the um, green leaf clover. I check the left, the right, three across the street. So that way I know that I'm at least touching five other people so I'm not walking over money, okay? So that's what my day looks like. There we go, awesome, thank you, Jen. Yeah, thank you. All right, Ms. Beverly, how are you doing this morning? Amazing. <laughs> And I got an appointment with you today at 12. Sweet. Wonderful. Uh, all right. So I'm got my lead. I'm in hand. I got all my stuff. Um, did you want me to share too also about like the stuff that I have with me? Like the brochures and no? Oh, we can just go with the lead okay. for now. So bump bada bump 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 bump. Hello. Hey Mr. David, how you doing today, sir? Um, I'm great. How are you well, doing? I'm great. Thank you for asking. My name is Jen. Yeah, I filled out this partial application requesting some info from us about some final expense coverage. Should take about five, ten minutes. May I come in? Uh, sure. Yeah, it looks Perfect. like my handwriting. Come on All in. Right. I'm going in. All right, so that's an easy door knock, so I'm going to give her a little bit of uh, some pushback, right? So we all dealt with that as well. <clears throat> all right. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Who is it? Hi. Good morning, Mr. David. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, how are you doing today, sir? 
I'm doing okay. I'm and good. Yes, so my name is Jen, and I'm here because you fill out a partial application requesting some information from us about some final expense. I, I don't see. I don't understand that. Yeah, absolutely. No worries. So it should take me about five, ten minutes. May I come what in? What is it? So you requested some info about some final expense coverage. Should take me about five, ten minutes to go to the information. May I come in? Is that for Social Security? Sure, it can be whatever you want it to be. No, sir. It's actually just for some final expense coverage. Uh, may I come in? It's, it's not really a great time. That's okay. No time's a good time at all. I have a lot of people to see today, Mr. David. I'm super busy, and I don't want you to miss this information. Should take me about five, ten minutes. May I come in? Geez, you're resilient. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Going in. All right. <laughs> so, so, so the thing at the door is... To continue to say, may I come in? Need me to go? Right, yes. You're, you're surprising some people, right? They don't want to be sold. They're watching Judge Judy. They think they're busy. I promise you, if you don't go in that house and you walk away, they sit in the couch like, man, I should let that person in because I got nothing going on right now. <laughs> Completely bored, right? Yeah. So, so again, you just got to be resilient. Your, your goal is to know that you have some information that they need and you need to get to them one way or another. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to do cold door knocks. We got Gabby. She's going to come up for that. Gabby is a cold door knock whisperer. Yes. So in case anyone doesn't know what a cold door knock is, she goes around and she knocks on doors without leads, right? And her best week, actually, she submitted $8,000, over $8,000 $8, in business, over $8,000 in business, all cold door knocking um, using the exact script she's going to share with you guys right now. So I basically got and I didn't want to buy anymore and get further into that. So I was like, I got to do this. I got to do this for my family. So like, what am I going to do? You get past the fear. The mindset thing that he brought up is a huge factor of it. I mean, trust me, I've been in Lake Charles in the back of my car, curled up in a ball crying, but I didn't stop. I didn't stop at the few months in. I was like, well, that's what's part of the process. So. I, I'm from Lafayette, so I kind of knew basic areas where that type of income might be. So I shot down ambassador near Congress and Mall Street and whatnot, so just started knocking. And sometimes I didn't even have a lead from next door because I would just go to any neighborhood and I would just say, someone in your neighborhood. So, let's go up. Bum, 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 bum. Hello. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm good. My name is Gabrielle, and I'm in the neighborhood with Senior Life today because a few of your neighbors have actually requested information about final expense coverage. So I'd just like to check to make sure everyone else has what they need. Have you had to attend a funeral recently by chance? N not recently, but, but I've been at one before, yeah. Right, have you noticed how expensive they've gotten? I, 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 I would assume they're expensive. I, I had nothing to do with the paying, paying just but... Just so you know, they're around 15000 today. Which for a is, funeral? Yeah, it's crazy. It costs more to die than to, to get Absolutely, born. Absolutely, I know. It's ridiculous, and they're continuing to go up. And if you notice the gas prices right now, there's no stopping it. It's every every type of merchandise, including funerals. Right, I didn't think so about like, that. Yeah, today, caskets are around 10000 So what we can actually do is reduce all that by 60 to 80% off and locking in that coverage. So you don't have to worry about the fear of where our world is going with all of these ludicrous prices. So it only takes about five minutes, and we can sit outside if I'm going to show you. It, it's, um, could, could we schedule another time to do this? Sure. I mean, we could, but like uh, I said, I do have a person next door to see as well. Okay. So it only takes a few minutes, and I mean, I can do it right here. It's free. I mean, people get... Oh, it's free. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, people get blown away by the amazing prices. Okay. So what's your first name? David. Awesome. Awesome. Now, obviously, it varies. It varies between every person. I get a lot of the whole, I already have insurance and i usually say that's great you let's know. do it yeah okay so bump bada bump 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 hey how you doing hey my name is gabrielle and i'm here with senior life insurance and i'm in the area because a few of your neighbors have actually requested information have you gotten one of these in the mail they i come don't in like remember a envelope yeah so you probably just missed it but that's okay so basically they're curious about this coverage being locked in with everything getting so expensive so it only takes about five minutes. So can I just go over this with you? I, you just... I have insurance. Is this insurance? I already have insurance. You do? Perfect. That's awesome. Because this really wouldn't make sense if you didn't. Wow. So I didn't think about this, that. Yeah. No, because how many kids do you have? Eight. Oh, my God. So you have a lot of family to protect. Yes. So what if I told you you could actually leave everything you already have for them by locking in these prices so that the funeral home doesn't take advantage of what you have when your kids are trying to be together and grieve your loss? So you, it's pretty you, amazing. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, let's that have a good. seat. Let's go inside. Uh, yeah, come on in. Awesome. It's hot out here. Perfect. 
So the the trick with cold door knocking is is talking to people like we talk about like the leads, right? Like you could talk, you could knock on a lot of doors My really top fast. Door knock of the day is over 120 doors. Right. So and I'll go the whole day not eating. My little treat was I used to smoke cigarettes. I quit. Yeah. But it's the same thing. I won't eat and all that. So like it's a reward system for myself as well. And sometimes it is at the end of the day. And sometimes it's not about the first half. It's after five. Because the people you want are kind of in their 50s. And they're probably still working. So dark 30s are really important. Awesome. Thank you so much. So once you get into the door, right, we talked about getting into the door with a lead. We talked about getting in the door without a lead. Um, once you get into the door, especially if you have to get in the door a little aggressively or somebody that wasn't really ready for you or they didn't really want to let you in, but they finally let you in, you need to make a friend. So Jen knows how to make friends better than anyone else I know in this world. So, so Jen's going to show some examples of how she would make a friend when she got into the house. friends we are friends she's already <laughs> friends with everyone she starts off friends so okay so we're in the house we're in the house um, okay so uh, mr david what prompted you to fill out this card what were you looking for sir uh insurance perfect okay so you have coverage does your family have coverage yes they do okay are you married um not yet not yet. Not yet. I'm still looking my, for my bride. Okay. Yeah. You know, they got this really cool thing where they have like mail order brides. I've actually met a couple of clients. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool. They have mail order yeah, brides. Yeah, it's really cool. So I, Do I, they come in a box? Man, I really don't know. I, I'm actually going to go you know, Google that one day. So okay. I really want to find out too. But you know, maybe if you have any trouble, just give that a try. You think I need a mail order bride? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> just take it with you, Mr. David. Yeah, you know, I'm sure God's going to provide your wife one day, man. Don't give up. Thank you. I, yeah. Thank you. Do you want one that cooks? Cooking would be very important. <laughs> very Cooking good. Would I've been looking important. for one for my godfather for a while now. So, awesome, awesome. You know, cook or clean. So definitely need a bride for him. So probably going to go find him one that I can buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have any children? You ever um, no, because I'm waiting on the wife. Okay, right? so no kids. I, got, I need the wife and the, the children. Okay, no yeah. worries. Do you have any siblings? I got a sister. Wonderful. Are y'all close? We're close sometimes. Yeah. Does yes. she live here? No, she's, she's in a different state. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, Mr. David, uh, what's your date of birth, sir? Uh, July. Perfect. So. Okay. So, so that there's an example of something Jen probably really does on a regular basis. <laughs> Just so, kind of make them laugh, you know, like, you know, there's things around their house, you know, David, I mean, obviously we all know there's stuff around the house. There's pictures on the walls. Um, you know, there's, I mean, if you look around, like I, I covered a guy yesterday, his son was uh, on a scholarship in college for a basketball in New Orleans. The guy's birthday's coming up. I'm like, oh man, cool. Well, what are you doing for your birthday? You know, what, you guys got any plans? You know, so David, you, if your birthday was coming up, you know, you would talk about their birthday. You know, where are you going? What are you doing? Man, I wish I would have known. I would have brought you a cupcake or something with a candle. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. <laughs> um, now we're going to go telesales. Right, you know, we got a lot of people selling on the phone. We got our virtual call center, which is doing amazing. Um, the greeting, right? The greeting is a very important part of that call because that's the when they decide if they're going to hang up on you or if they're going to stay on the phone with you, right? It's that split second, like, oh, this is another telemarketer, click, right? Or hold on, how am I going to get off the phone? They start thinking in their head, like, what? How am I going to get off my phone? Um, I need to get off, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not mean enough to hang up on this person, but I need a fast excuse to get off this phone. Um, so you got to be fast with the greeting. And Bianca is a ninja at the greeting. So, so let's hear it. David? Hey. Hey, David, this is Bianca with Senior Life. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. So the reason why I'm calling is you had called into our commercial recently requesting some information. Were you looking for yourself or were you looking for a loved one? Uh, myself. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you have coverage currently? No. No? Okay, perfect. So I'm definitely going to be here to help you with that. So I'm going to ask you just a couple of discount questions and we can see what you qualify for. What's your date of birth? Awesome. July. Right? Yes. So real simple. We'll, we'll do it again. So, so we went over a TV lead, but let's say uh, Bianca's calling some direct mail leads, right? She's got some direct mail leads she hasn't gotten in contact with. She's been sitting on her desk for, for a few months. She likes to find money out of old leads. How would you do it? David? Yes. Hey, 
David. This is Bianca with Senior Life. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. So the reason why I'm calling is you had filled out this card requesting some information about some final expense coverage. Were you looking for yourself or were you looking for a loved one? I don't remember filling a card out. That's totally okay. I don't remember what happened yesterday, unfortunately. Let me read a little bit to you. It was a 2022 benefit of information card for Louisiana residents only. It said you can get up to $30,000 in coverage. Oh, that does sound like something I might fill out. $30,000, yes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Were you looking for yourself or were you looking for a loved one? Um, anyone, I, any, my whole family needs 30000 Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> well, I can definitely help you out with that. So it's just going to take about five minutes to go over the information. So I see here you're 57. What's your date of birth? July. So awesome, right? Real simple, real fast. Right, she, she's fast with it, she's got a tone, she sounds pleasant, someone I wanna talk to, she doesn't sound like she has an attitude, she doesn't sound angry, she doesn't sound like the last 200 people hung up on her, which is super important, right? You can't let the last call affect your next call. You can't let the last door affect your next door, right? Everything's a new, new, new chance, new opportunity. All right, so now we're gonna go over power questions, right? You're in the house, you made the friend, now we need to identify the need. You're on the phone, you got them on the phone, now you gotta identify the need, right? Well, after we get past the greeting, we, we need to figure out how we can help these people. So Bianca's gonna go over the power questions with me. David, let me ask you, who's going to be the person taking care of everything for you when, when you pass away? Um, probably either my mother or my girlfriend, probably. Okay. Your mom, has, has she ever had to plan a funeral before? I don't think she's ever been actually in charge of it. She's, she's been at some. She might have had a little bit, but I don't think she's okay. been the, the decision maker before. Okay. Okay. What about your girlfriend? Has she ever had to plan a funeral before? Not, not decision maker level. So if something happened to you, that'd probably be a very overwhelming experience for them. Yeah, they'd be a mess. Yeah. Absolutely. So I totally understand that. Most people would feel the same way. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever had to deal with a funeral or make yes, arrangements for a loved one? I have. You have? Yeah. Okay. Was that recently or has it been a while? Uh, about three years ago. Three years? Yeah. What, what happened? Was it a close family member? Uh, my father passed away. Your father? My yeah. condolences. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. How did he pass? Passed in sleep. They did oh. Heart attack, I guess. They didn't give me an answer. And it just goes to show, you know, we never know when our last day is going to be. Unfortunately. Right? Um, did your dad, did he have life insurance? No, unfortunately no, again. No insurance, wow. Right. What, what was your experience like with the funeral home? Were they helpful? Were they reasonable? It was the most uncomfortable thing I've done in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Did, I mean, do you feel like they took advantage or? Um, you know, it's, it, it was tough. It was just, it was uncomfortable. I just kind of said yes to, to everything. Right. They, yeah. Just to get over with. I've been through it myself. You know, my, my daughter's dad passed away. My condolences to you yeah, too. No insurance, you know. And, and one of the first things they asked me when I walked into the funeral home was, how do you expect to pay for this? Or how much life insurance? Right, that makes have? sense, yeah. You know, yeah, I think anything. they did the same thing with me. They, yeah. they want to make sure we could pay. Yeah, and with us, they proceeded to upsell, make you buy things you didn't need. And it was, uh, if we would have had them buried, it was going to cost almost $15,000. Wow. You know, yeah. so very overwhelming. Right. Do you remember how much I ended up spending on your dad's services? Um, we did the cremation. Cremation. So uh, we it was it was about five thousand. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm assuming that's probably why you called in. You don't want your mom or your girlfriend to have to go through what you went through. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I didn't even realize that's why I called in. But now that yeah. you bring that up, that's exactly why I called in. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to be buried or do you want to be cremated? I don't. I'm leaning towards buried. Buried. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree most people would want to be buried. It's going to allow your family to pay their respects, say their goodbye, have more closure. That's what I was, it's just more traditional to me, yeah. I think. Yeah. Have you looked into the average cost of a funeral in your area recently? No, I don't do much funeral shopping. Okay. If you had to take a guess, what do you think the average cost would be? 30000 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and let me ask you this question. Do you know maybe how much it would cost in the next 10, 15 years? No, I didn't even think about that. If gas prices keep going up, it who knows? If you had to take a guess, what would you say? 60000 Yeah, absolutely. Double. Right. right. So let me ask you a question. If something happens to you today, does your mom or your girlfriend have the $30,000 that it would cost to cover your funeral? 
No, they don't. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to help you with, right? We're going to ask you a few questions, make sure we can get you qualified and get this set up for you, okay? Thank you. That makes sense. Perfect. So if you see what, what Bianca did, right? Yeah. Great job. So Bianca painted a picture. She wanted to see if I had any experience with the funeral. She wanted to see if anyone that would be in charge of my funeral had any experience. She wanted to see what I thought they cost. If I said $70,000, she's like, yeah, absolutely. Because whatever I think a funeral is going to cost, if I'm on the high end, that's what it's going to cost. If I walk in the funeral home with 70 grand, like, all right, let's do this. They're going to make it cost 70 grand. I'm going to have a copper King Tut looking <laughs> casket, right, for my loved one. You know, if I came back and I said, oh, funeral's like $2,000, she would have corrected me up, right? So she, so she painted the picture. She saw what I knew, what I wanted, what I had money to pay for, who was around me that could help me and what their experiences was, right? So now later on, she could take all that information and fill those holes, right, that need, that need help. So she did a great job with that. Now we're gonna have Bianca explain legacy, or she, she's gonna explain senior life insurance company, right? So once you fi find the need, right, you go through the application, the application brings up the senior life insurance company flyer. That's where I talk about senior life. Um, so, so Bianca's gonna explain the difference between a senior life insurance company policy and, and someone else. So David, it looks like you may qualify for one of our best plans. So I'm just going to go over some of the features and benefits with the policy. So this is going to be a whole life policy. Do you, do you know the difference between term and whole life? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be a whole life policy. So you're going to be covered up until age 100. Okay. Okay. It would also be an immediate benefit plan. So if something happens to you, God forbid, tomorrow, you're covered day one. The company would pay the full amount where most insurance companies, you have like a two year waiting period. Okay. Right, so this would be immediate. Uh, we do cover for natural death and accidental. So if you die of an accident, your policy would actually double in value. Okay. Car accident, fall, hit your head, something like that, okay? Now this will also build a cash value. So if you ever get in a bind or something happens, you can actually borrow against your policy, okay? Okay. The cool thing too is if you once it builds cash value, if you ever miss a payment or get in a bind, the policy would actually pay the premium out of your cash value. So being that you're on a fixed income, they may be a good, good benefit for you. Awesome, right? okay. Now, the best thing about the policy is that we do pay the claim out to your beneficiary within 24 hours, okay? Okay. Who would that person be for you? Uh, Michelle, my fiance. Michelle, okay. So the reason why we pay so quickly is most insurance companies take about six to eight weeks before they pay a claim, right? And what happens with the funeral home, they normally want some sort of policy or some sort of payment, right? So if Michelle would have to walk into the funeral home and hand over your policy, they would end up taking the entire policy. Right. Which that we don't sense. want, correct? Okay. Yes. Right, so we're, Senior Life's gonna pay directly to her, that way she's in full control over those funds. Okay. All right, that don't you think sense. that would be helpful? Definitely. Absolutely. Awesome. So again, great job. So what comes with Legacy is our sister company. Um, I'm sorry, what comes with Senior Life is our sister company. It's where you have access to all your high quality funeral merchandise locked in at 80% off. What that means is that you guys have access to over 250 different caskets, all locked in at $2,000. Your headstones are $850 on up and your vaults are $750. So for $3,600 you can get your casket headstone vault locked in for life, okay? The only time that price ever changes is if you decide to change your, head, your headstone. If you change your headstone, of course it changes the price and it can be only because you probably want a different type of headstone or you want a companion headstone, okay? All of our caskets are 18 gauge steel, high quality caskets with the seal, which means there's like ones that have praying hands, the Bible, some that are pink, purple, blue, green. I mean, if you like John Deere, they're also a, a John Deere casket as well. Um, <clears throat> what it does for you, is it allows you to put all your stuff in place. It also allows you to add four additional household members and no additional charge. So just by you having something with Senior Life, you're also going to get all these benefits for them as well. Okay? I'm also going to come and help you. On a Sunday, usually after church, I'll come and set this all up with you. We'll go ahead and pre-plan, pick, and put everything in place ahead of time. And you don't pay for anything until you pass. Okay? How's that sound? Pretty cool, huh?
Okay, you also have the WISH team, and that's an acronym for Where Individuals Seek Help. What they do for you guys is they will actually, pre they will call into the funeral homes, they will negotiate, they will do all the price shopping, negotiating, and haggling with them on y'all behalf for your loved ones, and the only thing your family's gonna need to do is contact Legacy or myself first, okay? Which means everything's gonna be done and taken care of. You also see right here where these crazy prices are what funeral homes charge people. We actually have gotten people buried from about 4,000 to 6,500 at most, okay? That's everything, casket, headstone, vault, service, embalming, plot two, okay? Now we also have a promotion going on too where you actually have access to telesales, uh, telehealth. You have your 24 seven on-call doctor where you can either just call them up or FaceTime them, it can be three o'clock on a Sunday morning. Um, 3 a.m. you call them up, tell them your symptoms, they'll diagnose you, send your pro uh, a prescription to the pharmacy. What happens then is that you just go pick it up. It's cheaper than a walk-in clinic or emergency room. It is like $48 if you ever use it, but they do accept most insurance claims. I don't know which ones they do, but if you do use it, just ask them and they'll let you know. You also have um, your diabetic supplies at a discount. You have compression socks, sleeves, prickers, diabetic shoes. And then you also have a free hearing test once a year and discounted hearing aids. Okay? So all this stuff comes with your policy. That's an amazing benefit. Um, all your urns are also locked in at $99. We've got about, I want to say six urns. These are all handcrafted brass urns. They're beautifully made. And then all this stuff can be overnighted to the funeral home of your choice after you've planned everything in place, okay? Good. Good yeah. Yeah. All right, so the way I look at objections, there's two levels of an objection, two main levels, right? So there's the objection the first time they say it, right? You know, for instance, I need to talk to my daughter. So the first time you get the objection, you really want to ignore the objection. You know, acknowledge, ignore, move on. Now, if you get the same objection later on, well now, obviously you're gonna to have to meet that objection face on, right? And what you would say would be different. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some objection training with Bianca, and we're just gonna, I'm gonna hit her with objections and we're gonna do first level objections, right? And as, as we're going. And then from there, we're gonna to try to stump her and we're gonna make her go deeper. We're gonna make her deal with the objections head on. So this business is all about getting over objections. Like once you learn how to get over objections, the rest is easy. You know, what I always tell people is the difference between an agent that's average or not having the success they wanted and one that's having the success that they want is they learn how to deal with objections. They stop believing the objection like it's something real. I'll give you an example. I researched a TV I wanted to buy for like six months, right? I found out where I wanted to buy it, which was Best Buy. I knew the exact price of the TV. I walked into Best Buy with my Best Buy credit card ready to buy the TV. A salesperson came running right up to me. Can I help you? No, 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 I'm just looking, was my, my immediate response. It was a reflex. As soon as I said that, I'm like, I'm such an idiot because I actually need this guy to buy this TV. Like I can't walk in the back and grab the TV. So I had to humble myself for a second and say, actually, I do need your help. I had to basically chase the guy down because I couldn't buy the TV without him, right? So our clients do the same exact thing. Right, and, and that's what the objections are. And when we realize that, and we learn to get around those objections, we ultimately get to help more people. I remember being in this yard, I pulled up, the lady was outside of the yard, and I, I hate when they're outside when I'm pulling up, because they see me coming, right? They, like, they have time to start thinking about what they're gonna say and how they're gonna get rid of me. And it's like, all right, here I come. I'm out with my clipboard. Hey, how you doing? Nope, nope. She's walking away from me. I was like, no, you filled this card out. She's like, nope, nope. And she's walking around and I'm literally following her. We're walking circles around the yard, like follow the leader. <laughs> and I'm holding my clipboard and in my head, I'm like, there's no way I'm getting in this house. But I, what I wanna make sure is I did everything I can to get in the house so I could take that lead and put it in my other pile. Right, I didn't want to put that lead in my, oh, maybe I could have gotten if I tried a little harder pile, because that's a tough pile to deal with, right? So I just kept falling around in circles, like, no, you filled this out, we gotta go over this, they're gonna keep sending me, you don't understand, I'm obligated, and 
I just threw every single thing I can to this lady to get in the house, and she let. And honestly, I did not think I was getting the house. I was having fun at that point, right? <laughs> I paid thirty-five dollars for this. I'm about to have some fun, right? <laughs> We're gonna have a blast together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's that's how I felt, right? And I followed her around, and eventually she let me in the house. I was like, oh, I don't even know what to do now. And that's when you got to make a friend, right? Because she let me in the house. I don't know why she let me in the house. I honestly thought there's no chance to get in the house. I just kept going through the motions regardless. She let me in the house. And long story short, she's writing the check. And she just starts busting out laughing. And I'm looking at her like, what the heck is going on now? And she's like, I am so sorry. I was so mean to you. I had no idea you were going to show me what you showed me. You know, and she completely apologized She's still on the books, right? And I easily could have walked away the first time she's like, oh, get out of my yard, <laughs> easily, right? But I wanted to keep going through, keep dealing with the objections, just, just doing my job and making sure I did whatever I had to do to get her the information. Um, so again, let's, let's stump Bianca, lady on fire. Let, let's see, she's ready, she's pumped. Yeah. <laughs> so Bianca, I, I love what you're showing me, but I can't afford it. Absolutely, Mr. David. I understand you can't afford it. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. Back to the app. Back to the app. So, you so, said you wanted your beneficiary to be John? Yes. Perfect. All right. So she ignored the, she acknowledged the objection. She agreed. She went around the objection, but she, the most important thing is she asked the next question on the app because that's what's going to help you move forward. If she doesn't do that, you're just we're having a stare off. Yeah. Right? You got, you got to take forward. You got to move forward. So it opens the door and you don't take the step in. Everyone's just looking at each other kind of awkward at that point, right? When, and you're almost like waiting for permission from them to move forward and they're not going to do that. No. So you almost have to take them by the hand and walk right. them down. Bianca, I, I love what you have, but I need to talk to my children. Absolutely. I'd want to talk to my children too. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted your daughter Susie to be your primary beneficiary? That's correct. Perfect. Bianca, I love what you, I love everything, but my children make all my decisions. Absolutely. I understand your children make all your decisions. I would do the same thing for my mom. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? I did. This next one's the hard one. <laughs> Bianca, I just need to think about it. Absolutely. I'd want to think about it too. So while you're thinking about it, let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. Listen, I got plenty of insurance. Absolutely. 90% of our clients have coverage already. We could all use a little bit more. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. I'm not interested in this. Absolutely, Mr. David. Look, I wouldn't even be interested either if I didn't have all the information. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes. Perfect. Listen, I, I want to get it, but I don't ever make a decision until I sleep on it. Absolutely. I totally understand that. And you definitely have time to sleep on it. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? I sure did. Perfect. <laughs> All right, how'd she do? Good. Now we're gonna get deeper. <laughs> okay. Bianca, like I told you before, I can't afford it. I understand, Mr. David, you can't afford it. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. No, but I'm telling you, like I, I don't have the money for it. Okay, I understand. And look, a lot of our clients on, are on a fixed income, so I understand that, you know, this is a lot to take in, but I'm pretty sure that you can pay a dollar a day much more than your children can pay $10,000 at one time. Wouldn't you agree? That's true. Okay, so just a dollar a day. Can you afford a dollar a day? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, well look, you don't have to decide now. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary I beneficiary? Sure did. <laughs> Bianca, like I told you before, I need to talk to my children. I understand you need to talk to your children. This is a big decision. I'd want to talk to my children too. Let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. I, I don't want to move forward until I talk to my children. I totally understand that. Let me ask you a question. When your children were little, right? Mm -hmm. And you used to put them in their car seat. Yeah. 
Did you ask their permission before you buckled them into their car no, seat? No, of course not. Of course not. Why not? Because it's our job to protect them. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing here. So why do you need their permission to protect them? I didn't think about it that way. Absolutely. So look, I'm gonna get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You will have an opportunity to talk to your children. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Perfect. Awesome. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Bianca, my children make all the decisions. Your children make all your decisions. I totally understand that. So look, I get some information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary? Yes, but again, my children make all my decisions. Look, I totally understand that, Mr. David, and if I were your children, I'd wanna do the same thing, but let me ask you a question. Did you bring your children into this world or did they bring you into this world? Well, of course, I brought them in. Exactly, so you as the parent know what's best, right? Yeah. You're older, you're wiser, right? Yes. Do you feel good? about putting this in place for them? Well, yeah, I guess so. Right. You know, and on that worst day, they're gonna be emotional, they're gonna be vulnerable, they're gonna be grieving. I guarantee you they're not gonna regret you doing this for them right now. All right, so let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Perfect. Bianca, I just, again, I love it. I just need to think about it. I understand you want to think about it. While you're thinking about it, let me get some more information and see if I can get you qualified. Again, I, I just got to think more first. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you're going to take all the time in the world. You need to think about it. This is just an application to see if we can get you approved. They're going to send you a policy. You have time to look it over, make any changes before anything's actually finalized. Okay? So let me get some more information and see if I can get you qualified. And you said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I sure did. Thank you. Bianca, I, I got so much insurance, I, I, I don't need any more insurance. The last thing I need is more insurance. I understand that, I understand that. So most of our clients have insurance already, right? Um, there's two things that people always tell me when they lose a loved one. One, I'm glad they had insurance. And two, I wish they had a little bit more, mm. right? So you said you have $10,000. That would probably be enough to cover you if you passed away today. But as we talked about before, every 10 years the cost will change, right? So this is just gonna protect what you already have in place. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I did, I sure did. Okay, great. Yuck, I, I'm not really interested in any of this. I understand, I understand. So I have a lot of people that tell me they're not interested every day, right? Um, but again, why was it that you called in to our advertisement? I was interested. You were interested. Right. And you told me you didn't have insurance, right? Yes. Okay. So that's what we're going to do for your children today is put this in place to make sure on that worst day when you pass away, they have <sighs> enough money to cover the cost of your services. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? I did. Okay. Again, I just got to sleep on it. That's it. I'll probably get it. <laughs> but I got to sleep on it. Okay. I understand, Mr. David. I would want to sleep on it too, you know, but at the end of the day, let me ask you this question. What happens if you go to sleep and you don't wake up tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I won't be here. Exactly. What is little Susie going to do? Does she have the $10,000 that it's going to cost to bury you? No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. So let me get some more information to see if I can get you qualified. You said you wanted Susie to be your primary beneficiary, right? Yes. How'd she do? 